It's a Denver Bronco, Carolina Panthers Super Bowl this year. And even though those are not two of the bigger cities with the bigger fan bases, the ticket prices have gone up to over $5,000 if you'd like to be there in person. Miro Kopic joins us. He's a San Diego State marketing lecturer, and he's here to talk about why things are so expensive with the NFL and when you come to the Super Bowl, why it costs so much there as well. Well, we have two of the smaller market teams making the Super Bowl, but the prices are even higher. We just have an obsession with football in this country. Yes, we do. Um, and the NFL is taking advantage of it, but uh, you've got um, a very important Super Bowl. It's the 50th Super Bowl, so that adds a little cachet. It's in a brand new stadium up in Santa Clara, the Levi Stadium up there. So you are in a, um, you know, in a, in a major market, but with two uh, non-major market teams that have made it uh, purely on merit. And we have spots, uh, commercial rates going up $5 million for 30 seconds. How can anybody afford that? Very few people can. Uh, the, you know, it's going to be big corporate sponsors. Uh, last year was the first year in a long time that a lot of brand new big corporate sponsors came on board uh, to broaden the, the, the category beyond beer, soda, cars, uh, and movies. Um, what, but what, the reason why the, the commercials cost this much is that there's a lot of media fragmentation. So now a consumer can, you know, you can be on Netflix, on Hulu, on YouTube. So the, the networks don't have the power that they used to. And when you can get 100 million people watching something all at the same time, it is worth a lot. Does it translate to dollars for those advertisers? It translates to very clearly brand awareness. Often it translates into sales and it cascades into goodwill going down the road. This allows these advertisers to kick off the year in an aggressive way to meet their sales targets. People who aren't on the Super Bowl, you know, have to kind of pick up the pace later in the year. You know, I, I heard Mark Cuban say something about the NFL. He's talking about the old uh, adage about hogs get slaughtered and such. Uh, and, you know, talking about the NFL is just they're grasping for more and more and more, and they're growing at a at what he perceives to be an unsustainable rate. I mean, can the NFL, can they continue to grow like this? You know, as long as the NFL can consolidate the audiences for advertisers, they can. I, I would suspect that the rate of growth is going to begin to taper off, but I see consistent growth because as marketers search for vehicles that are going to reach a lot of people who are in a very positive mindset, they don't find those avenues. You know, they're going into little micro-target audiences with a YouTube video or a ad on 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 Netflix or on on Hulu, for example. And so they're really struggling to find the concentrated audience. And this is one of the last pure play opportunities that exists in American media. What, what has football done that baseball or basketball has not done? Ha, I think what football has done very well is it spins the toughness of the, of the sport, the conditions in which they play. You know, if baseball, it rains, you, they, they're, they're off the field. You know, in football, they're playing in rain and snow. There's the, you know, the, the mythical nature of the individual players. So not only do you have your favorite team, but you really have these standout positions that are, that are very critical. Yes, you have it in basketball. Yes, you have it in, in baseball, but not to the extent that you have it in football. And um, the NFL has done an amazing job uh, in, in merchandising, not just the league in general, but in particularly the teams. Whether the teams do well or poorly, they, they, they've done an amazing job at merchandising uh, NFL gear. Well, you know, it's, it seems like I look at the Chargers, for example, their fan base outside of Southern California here in San Diego is it just doesn't exist. Uh, the right. Houston Texans, their fan base outside of Houston doesn't really exist. A lot of these teams have local fan bases, but they don't have national presence. And that's why when I look at the, the amounts of money that teams can make and, and that the NFL brings in, I'm thinking these guys are brand geniuses. Well, partly, but, you know, it's really funny. I did a little analysis on the Forbes listing of the top, you know, of, of, of the uh, both the value value and the, and the revenues of, of all 32 NFL teams. And if you look at teams like the Steelers, the Baltimore Ravens, the Indianapolis Colts, the Denver Broncos, and the Green Bay Packers, all these teams have very high team values, well, you know, closing in on $2 billion. They're small secondary cities, and they have more revenue, and they have more profits than the San Diego Chargers. And the San Diego Chargers, interestingly, are in the top half of the most profitable teams in the NFL beating teams out like the Chicago Bears, which is the third largest city in the country and, and a major media market. I can't. Now, how would that happen? 
<laughs> you know, it's a, it's a fascinating. You know, I think it goes to the to to the teams. Those teams that I just mentioned all have been in the Super Bowl or won Super Bowls within the last decade, and and in some cases multiple Super Bowls. And 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 I think at the end of the day, if the what the NFL has been able to do is put generally, with a handful of exceptions, very good product on the field. And it allows not only people to have their, their local area teams, but for those area fan bases to be broader. You know, one of the challenges with the San Diego Chargers is that, you know, in 50 years here in San Diego, we, we've been to one Super Bowl and we haven't won any. But you'll look at the Denver Broncos, they're playing their second Super Bowl in three years. They're a much smaller market than San Diego. And, and what's critical about branding is not just how it is marketed, but how good the product or service is. And if you have a superior product or service, you want to advertise it in a, you know, in a media venue like the Super Bowl as quickly as possible. You know, Professor, we've been hearing for a long time that the NFL was uh, that, just one of those types of examples where you don't necessarily have to put a good product on the field to still make a lot of money and be valuable. Um, you know, it, it's amazing because of what the NFL does to subsidize, and, you know, it's a, it's a whole study in, in, in kind of uh, cartel theory, but... The NFL subsidizes enough of the teams that don't do as well that they stay within range. And so you may have the Texans or the Chargers that don't have the broader fan base, but they have a loyal fan base within a very reasonable area of their, of their home market. You have 50-yard line seats for the Super Bowl? Oh, I did when the Chargers played in 1995, <laughs> but uh, this time I'll get a chance to, uh, to watch it on TV. I think it's more of a TV event anyway these days. Exactly. Meryl Kopik, uh, professor at San Diego State, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you coming on.